Well, it's good to be with you today. Thank you for being here. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Genesis chapter 5. In just a moment, we're going to look at verses 21 through 24. And uh, I want to talk to you today about your walk with God, walking with God. You know, the Christian life is a walk. It is a walk with the Lord And I want us to look today at a godly man named Enoch, E-N-O-C-H. You got to know who that is before they'll let you into heaven, all right? So I want you to know, and uh, in my opinion, he's one of the greatest people in the Bible. And I'll tell you why momentarily. Some of you are saying, Pastor, I've never heard very much about Enoch. Well, it's time that you do, so I'll take that. You know, that's my fault if you hadn't heard about him. And there are three texts in the Bible that refer to Enoch. Let's look at each of them right now. I want you to know where they are. First of all, where we'll primarily be will be in Genesis chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. You remember Methuselah lived the longest of any person ever to live. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years. He had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years walking in close fellowship with God. Now watch this. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. Is that cool or what? Hebrews 11. You can just write that down. You don't have to turn over. If you're quick, you can do it. It's in the New Testament. It's a chapter of faith, Hebrews 11, 5 and 6. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. I'll tell you the other guy that uh, went up to heaven without dying, and it wasn't Jesus. Jesus died. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God. And it's impossible. He starts talking about Enoch here. He pleased God. And it's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him, that is come to God, must believe that God exists. And, now listen, that he is a rewarder. Did you know that God is a rewarder? Hey, God doesn't treat everybody the same way. Oh, my. He rewards people that walk in faith. And everybody doesn't walk in faith. So there's some people he rewards and others he doesn't. You must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely do what? Say it out loud. Seek him. Okay, let's go to Jude. Jude chapter 1. There's only one chapter. It's the next to the last book in the Bible. It's right before Revelation verses 14 and 15. Enoch is here shown that he's a a prophet. He's the first prophet in the whole Bible. Enoch, who lived in the seventh generation after Adam, prophesied about these people, these ungodly people. He said, listen, the Lord is coming with countless thousands of his holy ones. That could be angels. It could be in the rapture. We don't know. To execute judgment on the people of the world. He will convict every person of all the ungodly things they have done for all the insults that God, ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So Enoch lived. He walked in close fellowship with God. He was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. He was known as a man who pleased God. Isn't that how you want to be known? To please God. Not yourself, but God. And he prophesied, the Lord is coming, he said, with countless thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on the people of the world. We need to get to know this man. Don't you think so? We need to get to know Enoch. So this morning, let me share. How many of you think, how many of you think I have, how many points do you think I have? Three. That's right. Three. That's right. That's just the way I roll, all right? All right. Sometimes I'll have four, never two. All right, number one, 
as you look at Enoch, first thing you see is your walk with God will be daily. Let's all say that together. Your walk with God will be daily. I'm just talking about living life. And did you know that when you live life, you're living it with the Lord? Genesis 5, 21 through 23. When Enoch was 65 years old, he became the father of Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years. He had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years. So he had a long walk with God, and it was a daily walk. Obviously, if you read in the first part of the Bible, people lived longer in that day than we do. Many people who lived closer to the time of Adam and Eve lived longer lives. You'll remember that Adam and Eve were supposed to live forever, ever, but because of their sin, they ate the forbidden fruit. They brought a curse upon themselves. You know, sometimes we are our own worst enemy. Did you know that? And we can bring a curse on ourselves like Adam and Eve did. And that curse was shared with all of us. And it is a dreadful curse that still haunts humanity today. God created Adam from dust. You remember that? That's why, ladies, men are always kind of dirty, you know, as far as they're dusty, they're dirty, you know. Well, we were made out of dust, okay? And when Adam sinned, God condemned Adam, all his descendants, including you and me, and we die, and guess what? We return to what? Dust. If you were to open up a coffin, you'd find out that body doesn't look the same way when you put it in there. Genesis 3 verse 17 and following. And by the way, I preached for, I think, 45 years out of the new American standard. And today I've made a change. And for the rest of my life, I'm going to preach out of the new living translation. All right. So Genesis 3, 17. And to the man, he said, since you listened to your wife, this is God talking. And you ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat. The ground is cursed because of you. All your life, you will struggle to scratch a living from it, from the ground. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains. But the sweat of your brow, by the sweat of your brow, will you have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. Read the last part with me. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Now, Genesis 5 gives us the first 10 generations of men on the earth. It goes all the way from Adam, the first man, to Noah right before the uh, ark. Number one, Adam lived and died. Man number two, Seth, Adam's son, lived and died. Number three, Enosh, not Enoch, but Enosh. Seth's son lived and died. And if you go back to the previous chapter at the very end, it says in Genesis 4.26, when Seth grew up, he had a son and named him Enosh. At that time, people first began to worship the Lord by name. Now, in these 10 men that we're going to just read very quickly, we're just going to look at their names. There are only two to four that could have been really in love with the Lord. I'll tell you the two in just a minute, but the two that might be are right here. Seth grew up, had a son, named him Enosh, and at that time, people first began to worship the Lord by name. So it's possible that one or both of these men, Seth, the son of Adam, or Enosh, son of Seth, were among the people who began to worship the Lord by name. Very possible, but we just don't know. Verse Uh, Then number nine is Kenan, Enosh's son. He lived and died. This is all in chapter five now. Number five, Mahalalel, Kenan's son, lived and died. You say, how do you know how to pronounce all those names? I don't. I just say them fast. You don't know the difference, do you? That's right. I've been doing that a long time. All right. Uh, Jared, Mahalalel's son, lived and died. And then look at number seven, Enosh, Enoch rather. Jared's son, lived 
to be 365, but he never died. He never died. Wow. Had a son, Methuselah, had other sons and daughters, Enoch's son. He lived and died. Methuselah did. Lamech, that's Methuselah's son. He lived and died. And then Noah, Lamech's son. At the age of 500, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem. How many of you have ever heard the word Semitic? Anybody heard the word Semitic referring to the Jews? That's where it comes from. The Jews are the descendants of Shem. Ham and Japheth, and like Enoch, Noah loved the Lord. We know that from chapter 6. So most of these guys became fathers. They lived, they died. But some were different. They loved the Lord. Possibly Seth or Enish, both of them loved the Lord. But we know for certain that Enoch and Noah walked in intimate fellowship with God. When Enoch was 65 he became the father of Methuselah. That's terrifying to me that he could become a father at 65. I'm telling you, that's terrifying. (laughs) Enoch lived for another 300 years after his son was born. He lived, he walked with God daily. He was salt. He was light in a very dark and a broken and a sinful world. And like all godly men, Enoch did daily what godly people do. That's what I'm talking about right now. Just just walking with God. He worshiped. He prayed. He worked. He earned a living. He wasn't lazy. He took care of his family. He helped other people. He engaged in daily life. You know, just because you're breathing doesn't mean you're living. Did you know that? Are you really engaged in life? I don't believe Enoch wasted a lot of time in those 365 years. He knew that Every day was the day that the Lord has made. And he rejoiced and he was glad. He knew that every day was just loaned to him. He didn't own it. He didn't deserve it. Every day is a gift from God. Amen? Amen. He was a good steward of every day. 365 years, he walked with God daily. Did you know that on an average, men live in America American men live to be 76 on the average. And did you know that American women live to be, on an average, 81? They win. So much for men being the stronger gender. And those numbers affirm exactly what the Bible says in Psalm 90, verse 10. You might want to write that down, Psalm 90, verse 10. 70 years are given to us Some even live to 80, but even the best years are filled with pain and trouble. Soon they disappear and we fly away. You ever heard that song, I'll Fly Away? That's where you got it, right there. That describes all of us. We walk with God daily. How long am I going to live? Well, on average, seven to eight decades. You're going to interact with others. And then should Jesus tarry, you're going to die. Hebrews 9, 27 says, each person is destined to die once. And after that comes not cessation of spirit, not coming back as a horse or somebody else. After that comes the judgment. We will... We'll live our daily lives in a few decades, and then we'll die. So Enoch walked with God daily. You should too. You should enjoy life. You should engage in life. You've all heard this, but wherever you are, be all there. How many of you enjoy talking to somebody and you know their their mind is a million miles away? Man, they're on their phone. They're checking their phone. Beware of people that carry their phone in their hand all the time. Because they don't listen. Most of them don't. If you would have told me that I was going to get sick, have cancer, if you told me that half a year ago, I'd say, what are you talking about? I'm fine. 
I'll work out. I'm good. And yet people get cancer every day, don't they? We're in a sinful, fallen world. People get divorced. There are people in this room. You got married. Wedding day was the highlight of your life. One of them. You've gone through a terrible divorce. Uh, that's the only kind of divorce there is. They're all terrible. And you're hurting. And by the way, you're not a second-rate person if you're divorced. I'm just saying it's a hard thing. Married couples get divorced. People lose their jobs. You can be a hard worker and still lose your job. You can have an accident because people are driving crazy. And you can get injured. Don and I drove by on I-40 yesterday. We were coming back from Murfreesboro. We went to see our grandchildren play basketball. And an 18-wheeler had just smashed into a pickup truck. Guess what? The 18-wheeler, I guess you could say it won. But there was metal scattered everywhere. I have no idea if somebody got hurt. The truck was in the median on the highway. Ambulance is on the way. It's just part of daily life, isn't it? We live on a broken planet. So walking means that we engage in daily activities. We get out of bed. And by the way, when you get out of bed, don't say, oh, Lord, it's morning. Say, good morning, Lord, okay? Change, change it right out of, the, out, of the, out of the gap, all right? Say, morning, Lord. This is the day the Lord's made. I'll be rejoiced and be glad in it. And, and then get out of bed and get dressed and eat a meal, go to work, pay your bills, fix a meal, eat, drink, do life. Just do what you're supposed to do and enjoy it. It's all part of God's plan. I like to say there are miracles in the mundane. Would you say that with me? There are miracles in the mundane. While you're breathing, live. <laughs> live life to the fullest every day. Your walk with God will be daily. Number two, your walk with God should be intimate. Not just daily, but intimate with the Lord. Your walk with God should be intimate. Look at verse 22 again. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God. Everybody say, lived in close fellowship with God. Say it out loud. Lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years. And he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 days. Here it is again, walking in close fellowship with God. Walking is synonymous here with living. And he became the father, again, at the age of 65. He lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years. Verses 23 and 24 affirm that by saying he had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years. He walked in close fellowship with God. So he walked faithfully. He walked close to the Lord with God. No doubt this man prayed. No, you can't be close to God if you don't pray. I mean, if you don't talk to somebody, you don't love them. If you love somebody, you talk with them. He loved the Lord and God reciprocated. God talked with him. He interacted with him intimately. It says he walked in close fellowship with God and it was intimate. Now, I love good Christian music. I love it all. Some of the music I listen to, you wouldn't listen to. Uh, my wife doesn't even listen to some of the music I listen to. Uh, she doesn't like bluegrass. I have no idea why. But I love good gospel bluegrass. I, amen in the back, brother, I hear you. You and I can listen to it after this is over with. And we'll rejoice. But one song that I dearly love is about walking intimately with the Lord. It's an old song. You probably know it if you don't. It says, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. Now listen. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. 
and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Is that you? Have you taken time today to walk and talk with God intimately? If so, what's what's the most recent thing that God said to you? Could be through another person. Could be through the Bible. Could be through this sermon. And by the way, I know I don't have good posture. So I just thought you'd let, I'd let you know that I know what you're seeing, so it's okay. All right. <laughs> What's the most recent thing God said to you? Do you walk and talk with God int- intimately? Do you worry or do you pray? And you can't do both. You can't do both. You're not supposed to worry. It's all over the Bible. I heard a guy tell me, in fact, he was one of my associate pastors at Lake at the West Jackson Baptist Church. He said, there were 365 do not worries in the Bible. One for every day. I've never counted them, but I'll tell you what, there's a whole lot of them. So do you walk with God? Do you talk with God intimately? Do you, or do you worry and not pray? When was the last time you told God that you were his own, like that song says? Are you intimate with God? You know, Jesus talked about being intimate with God when he talked about prayer. We read in Matthew 6, 6, Jesus said, but when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door. Everybody say, shut the door. Shut the door behind you and pray to your Father in private, in secret, secret place. Then your Father who sees everything will reward you. Did you see that? Your Father who sees everything will reward. Did you know that God doesn't treat everybody the same? He rewards people who pray. And He doesn't give the same rewards to everybody. Oh, we don't like that in our culture. Oh, my. But it's a vivid picture of spiritual intimacy with God. No secrets, nothing held back. You're all alone with the Lord. You're all in with God. You can tell God everything. You can't tell people everything. How many of you know that? Unless you want to hear it 55 times before you go home. You can't tell people everything. I don't tell people everything. I tell the Lord everything. And I pour out my heart to Him. That's intimacy. That's that's the real thing right there. So, are you walking intimately with God? Let's look at this text about Enoch over in the book of Jude, verses 1 through uh, chapter 1, verses 14 and 15 in Jude. It's next to the last book of the Bible. And by the way, Enoch, he says that Enoch is the first prophet of all time. And it says he was intimate with God and he hated sin. Look at Jude, verses 14 and 15. Enoch who lived in the seventh generation after Adam, prophesied about these people, these sinful people. He said, listen, the Lord is coming with countless thousands of His holy ones to execute judgment on the people of the world, worldly people, ungodly people. He will convict every person of all the ungodly things they have done and for all the insults that ungodly sinners have spoken against Him. This text says that it pained Enoch to see and hear godly, ungodly people slander the Lord. I want to ask you, do you cringe when somebody calls God's name in vain? Does that just bother you? Man, I can't handle it. I don't like it. Do you walk and talk intimately with God? And do you pray? Is your body, your physical body, a house of prayer? The Bible says in Isaiah 56, verse 7, even though I, even those I will bring to my holy mountain, this is the New American Standard, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings, their sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house will be called a house of what? Say it out loud. Prayer. prayer. For who? All the peoples. Every race. 
every color, every person is welcome in the house of God, and his house is a house of prayer. And by the way, every person is welcome at Bellevue. I want Bellevue to look like heaven, and I want Bellevue to look like Memphis. I want Memphis to come to Bellevue. We love Jesus, and we love Memphis. Can I have an amen in the house of God? Amen. Amen. It's only one race, the human race. And do you enjoy hearing God speak to you through his word? Now you say, I, you know, Donna told me, said, you need to explain that some. Okay, I will. When you read the Bible, read it like a love letter that God wrote to you. Hear what I just said? And one of the chapters in the Bible that's all about the Bible is the longest chapter in the Bible, and it's Psalm 119. It's all about Scripture. And verses 97 through 100 say, Oh, how I love your instructions, that is your commands. I think about them all day long. Do you carry Scripture with you on your person? You should. Just take a couple of verses with you. Write something down that really means a lot to you. He says, your commands make me wiser than my enemies. How many of you would like to be wiser than your enemies? Yeah. Well, get in the Word, for they are my constant guide. I can't tell you how many times I'll read through the Bible, and God will just give me something, and it really is a protective verse. I'll explain to you in a minute. Yes, I have more insight than my teachers. He's not just saying this. For I'm always thinking of your laws. I'm even wiser than my elders, people older than me. I've heard a lot of young people say really smart things. And I've heard older people say, people, say things that weren't that smart. So you can even be wiser than your elders. Why? For I have kept my commands. Now I want, I want you to learn to do something. Let me, let me take just a second to apply this. One of the things that I've been doing uh, for the last three months is praying Scripture. You say, where do you get them? When I read through the Bible and God really gives me a verse, now a lot of the verses I've been praying on about healing, but I've been praying other verses too. And God will just speak to my heart. How many of you know what I'm talking about? When you're reading the Bible and all of a sudden this verse just jumps off the page and says, look at me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? All right. When that happens, stop. Even if you don't have time to finish all of your reading at that time, just stop and then write it down. Now I've got an iPad that I've used a long time and I've got literally scores. That's like twenties. I've got dozens and dozens of verses that I pray every day. I'm not trying to make you think that I'm the holiest person in Memphis. I'm just trying to tell you, this is the way I live. This is the way I exist. This is the way I'm able to cope and to thrive. I've done this for years. When God speaks to me through a verse, I'll write it down and I'll pray it back to God. Uh, let me give you a verse like I'm about to read Hebrews 10, 25. And it says, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. It's real simple to pray this to God. God, I want to be with your people. I don't want to neglect meeting together with your people like some people do. I don't want to be like that. But Lord, I need encouragement. I want to encourage other people, especially in light of the fact that the return of Jesus Christ is drawing near. I want to be all in with the people of God. Now, did you see what I just did? It's so simple. I mean, it's, don't, don't make this some hard thing. God will give you a verse. I can't tell you how many times Donald will come in and say, God gave me a verse. And I said, God gave me a verse. And we pray it. And I write it down on my iPad and I pray it back. It's one of the best things you'll ever do. That's what it means. He says, I'm wiser than my elders, more insight than my teachers, wiser than my enemies. Why? Not because of me, but because of God's Word. God's Word 
is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Now, you need to enjoy fellowshipping with Christians. I just read you that. You need to worship and adore the Lord Jesus. Remember when Jesus talked to the woman at the well? He said in John 4, 23 through 24, the time is coming indeed, it's here now. When true worshipers, if there are true worshipers, there's also false worshipers, amen? People that come to church, they're just coming, checking it off their list. I'm going to church. Maybe God will bless me. Don't, don't look. If that's all you got. I'm not saying stay home, but get with the program. Come in here and fully engage. Don't come in here and just sit around. Take some notes. Indeed, he said, a time is coming. Indeed, now it is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Everybody say in spirit and in truth. That is, your, your spirit is engaged and you're doing it according to Scripture. And the Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. Can you even fathom what I just said? God is looking for somebody in this room to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Your spirit is all in. And you're in the Word of God, the truth. He says, for God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. Don't just come to church, man. Engage. Really get involved. And then Enoch walked intimately with God. Verse 22, after the birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in close fellowship with God for another 300 years, had other sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years. He walked in fellowship with God. Were there anybody else? Walk with God? Yeah, I told you about Noah. It says the same thing about Noah in Genesis 6, 9. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on the earth. When he went to church, it was just him. Well, Noah, how many people are in church today? One. Maybe a few of his kids. But he walked with God in close fellowship with God. Oh, that you and I will walk intimately with the Lord. The Bible says in Psalm 37, verse 23, the Lord directs the steps, that is the way we walk, of a godly man. Micah chapter 6, verse 8, beautiful verse. Just wanted you to have a couple extra verses here. The Lord has told you what's good, and this is what He requires of you. This is what God requires of you. Now listen, to do what's right, to love mercy. How many of you want mercy? How many of you want people to forgive you when you wrong them and you want God to forgive you when you wrong Him? How many of you want mercy? Anybody? All right. Here's how you get it. God blesses you if you love mercy. If you love mercy, if you have mercy with other people, God will give it to you. And He loves people and He requires you to do what's right, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God, to live in a humble way. Well, your walk with God should be daily. It will be. I mean, that's all you get. You get one day at a time. You know, that summer vacation you're planning, it may not turn out like you like. It may not even happen. We don't know. You get one day at a time. So walk with God daily. And then it should be an intimate walk with God. And then one day your walk with God can be heavenly. You're going to get to go up to heaven if you know the Lord. Look at verses 23 and 24 very quickly. Enoch walked. He lived 365 years. He walked, walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. He walked with God. One day they just kept walking, went all the way to heaven. Enoch walked with the Lord daily. He walked intimately. And then one day he disappeared. Because God took him. Only two people, only two people ever escaped physical death. Enoch and Elijah. As I said, even Jesus died. Three days later, he rose from the dead, but he died. Enoch was taken up into heaven without dying. We just saw that. And Elijah was also taken up to heaven without dying. 
I'll let you see it on the screen very quickly. 2 Kings 2, 11. As they, Elijah and Elisha, Elisha was the disciple of Elijah, were walking along and taking, talking, and suddenly a chariot of fire appeared, drawn by horses of fire. It drove between the two men, separating them, and Elijah was carried by, carried away by a whirlwind into heaven. I've had people say, do you really believe that? I sure do. I sure do. Enoch and Elijah never tasted physical death. Everybody else, though, should Jesus tarry in the rapture, were all destined to die once, according to Hebrews 9, 27. One day Enoch disappeared because God took him. And he shows you that you can experience a walk that leads to heaven. He also shows you that if you'll walk in faith, God will reward you. Let's go back very, very quickly to Hebrews 11, 5, 6, and 6. It was by faith that Enoch was taken up to heaven without dying. He disappeared because God took him. For before he was taken up, he was known as a person who pleased God, and it is impossible. It's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. I'm telling you, if you will seek the Lord, he will give you scriptural insight that he does not give to other people. He will give you blessings that he doesn't give to other people. If you will seek the Lord, God wants you to have a heavenly walk. And by the way, God doesn't want you to go to hell. God has never predestined one person to go to hell. Nobody goes to hell because God wants them to go to hell. The Bible says that even though many people do go to hell, God desires all people to go to heaven. 1 Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4. God, our Savior, wants everyone. It pleases, this is good and pleasing, pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. And then also 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. I'll tell you why people go to hell. Because they don't repent. They don't ask God to forgive them for their sins. They don't believe that Jesus died on the cross for them. They don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead for them. And they don't receive him into their lives. Those are the people who choose to go to hell. Enoch chose to walk with God. He had a walk with God. Do you? Do you have a walk with God? Do you have a heavenly walk with Jesus? Do you know that you've been saved by Christ through faith? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, by, God saved you by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it. Don't you love that version? Isn't that beautiful? Have you been saved by the grace and of God through faith? You can walk with God and believe in Him by faith. Hebrews eleven six 6 again, it's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to Him must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who sincerely seek Him. I tell you something else I believe. I believe you can also be healed physically by believing God in faith. I believe that. I'm coming. Matthew 9, 27 and following, two blind men followed along behind him, shouting, Son of David, have mercy. Why were they shouting? They didn't know where he was. They're blind. They don't know if they're two feet in front of him or two, two meters in front of him. They don't know. So they're shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. They went right into the house where he was staying. Jesus asked them, Do you believe? Everybody said that out loud. Do you believe? Do you believe I can make you well? See? Yes, Lord, they told him we do. And he touched their eyes and said, because of your faith, it will happen. Say it with me. Because of your faith, it will happen. And then their eyes were opened and they could see. Jesus sternly warned them, don't you tell anybody about this, but, 
They disobeyed him, didn't they? Instead, they went out and spread his fame all over the region. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. You need to walk with God. It's all rooted in faith. And then one day, God will take you to heaven. Enoch was a great man of God. Amen? Are you walking with God? Are you walking with Him daily? Are you just kind of letting life happen? Don't let life happen. Wake up and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice. I'll be glad in it. Maybe the last day you got. It's all right. Either way, we win. We live another day, we live another day. Either here or in heaven, it's okay. But when you're here, be all in. When people are talking to you, listen to them. Look them in the eye and listen. Be engaged. Go to work. Do what you're supposed to do. Do the right thing. And then number two, your walk should be intimate. Love the Lord. Love Him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Just rear back and love the Lord. He'll love you back. He'll reward you. If you'll walk with Him daily, if you'll walk with Him intimately, then one of these days it won't be that hard to walk with Him. Your walk with God can be heavenly.